All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for another JBNA webinar. Today, we are joined by Shane Vega from Userful. I'm really excited about today's webinar because it's a really interesting topic. So we've been involved with control rooms for quite a while, and it's really been a hardware-driven space, but Userful is really redefining that. So Shane, I would love to, get, to have you give an introduction to our partners about Userful and kind of what you're doing to do that transition from hardware to a software-based control room. Shane. Absolutely. Thank you, Matt. And, and very excited to be here. Very excited to be talking on this uh, particular topic. Uh, so you, you hit the nail right on the head, right? Userful is shaking up the industry and doing something that quite candidly nobody else is doing. And what that is, is we, we are taking a software-defined approach to distribution of you know, data across a wide variety of network displays. And so in the AV industry, primarily, as you had mentioned, you, you know, this is being accomplished through a hardware-centric, more often than not proprietary solution. And so what we're doing is we're, we're taking a step outside the line, if you will, or outside the box, and we're saying there's a better way to do this. Let's optimize for the IT infrastructure and let's create a solution that can be easily deployed. Yeah, that's fantastic. And so as we go through here, you know, when, when people hear about userful, oftentimes and they and they when you lead with something that says, hey, you know, we are a software defined solution, we get head tilts. And this happens quite a bit. Uh, and, and quite candidly, people are just so used to selling boxes. Everybody wants to sell hardware because that's just what people are used to. And in the AV industry, almost exclusively, that's what that's that's the architecture, right? Well, how do I get from point A to point B? Well, you buy this matrix switch, you buy this encoder, you buy this decoder, you buy this display. And at the end of it all, you have this this uh, this distributed solution that gets you from A to B, but you're doing that with a whole lot of hardware and a whole lot of proprietary hardware. Uh, so as we kind of look through this right here, Userful is doing this um, exclusively through a software using non-proprietary hardware. So when you think about um, enterprise organizations, when you think about state and local government entities, when you think about any any wide range of vertical markets where they've got a ton of displays that they have to send content to, um, this becomes a significantly more economical at a bare bone minimum, right? Is that you no longer have to purchase and procure a whole lot of hardware to achieve the same goal. Um, and we'll use, let me get to this next screen here. So this is what we're talking about. Uh, if you can see my screen, traditional AV is optimized for AV. And so here's what that means, is they say, look, we want to give you the highest frame rate. We want to give you the highest resolution. We want to give you the most color richness and depth and clarity and everything else. And so we're going to do that by um, optimizing our solution around video. We're going to optimize our solution around, you know, the transmission. It's not the transmission, but just the video itself, the content. And then what they do is they provide usually a separate network, whether it's for AV control, whether it's for AV distribution, and that's all this traditional hardware uh, middleware that you see here, whether it be, again, the encoders that we spoke about briefly, or whether it be the you know matrix switchers, and they build out this infrastructure to support their AV solution, because quite candidly, you know, in many cases, the existing infrastructure in an organization can't support that level of bandwidth, that level of distribution, that the AV hardware is taking over. So essentially, they're taking the burden and the heavy lifting and saying, look, we know your network can't support this. So what we're going to do is we're going to provide you all this hardware so that we can provide and lay the foundation of the infrastructure that's going to support your video distribution. And then you just give us a couple of hooks into your network, and then we'll do some transcoding and maybe give you the ability to send some of this stuff out onto the network without overburdening your network. And I know this because I used to work for an integrator. Okay, <laughs> And so then what would happen is, you know, when you start to get into issues and frustrations and you start to see, you know, the, the quality starts to, to degrade, what, what often happens is we go and we disconnect the network and we say, look, look at how well it works when we're just optimizing over our own network or our own AV infrastructure that we provided you, right? That's, that's the one argument. Um, but the end user is stuck saying, but I need it to work on our infrastructure. I need to be able to get operators who might not be in the four walls of let's say an operation center or i need to have information sent to another facility or another room even um and i need i need to have that situational awareness how do i do that if our network is 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 not optimized for your solution and so userful steps in and we say no we understand the burdens right so we optimize 
for your network infrastructure. Because we're a software defined solution, we actually are achieving the same goals, but we're taking an entirely different approach. So where other folks are saying, well, we're gonna throw in this hardware encoder, we're gonna throw in this matrix switcher, we're saying, well, the network and the IT world has already a ton of protocols, a ton of distribution methods that they're utilizing. Take this conversation that we're having right now. We're having a video teleconference and we're sharing data and we're doing it from standards-based computers local to our homes, at least I'm at home, <laughs> and we're able to, to, visual, you know, to visually see each other, we're able to share content, and there's no hardware encoders, there's no you know, uh, middleware. We're doing that because there are already protocols in place that have optimized for network infrastructure for the distribution of video, for the distribution of content, and so Userful has just optimized our solution, you're going to hear me say this a lot, around standards that are already in place, but not AV standards, IT standards. And that is probably one of the biggest differentiators between us and everybody else out there is everybody talks about the convergence of AV and IT. I don't care which AV organization you go to, I don't care if it's a manufacturer, an integrator, everybody is talking about this convergence of AV and IT, but they're, they're, they're talking about it from behind the eight ball. They're talking about it saying, we know this convergence is happening, so how do we optimize our hardware solution for the network? And, and quite candidly, that will never be a good solution for a multitude of reasons, and, and not the least of which is the fact that you're trying to accomplish the, the distribution of high bandwidth, high quality data over an infrastructure that won't support it. And so what we do is we say, no, we're gonna utilize those standards that are already in place. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say, we're gonna make our solution work with whatever infrastructure you have. Obviously we have some standards and we have some requirements, but those requirements again, have been based on what we know of the industry thus far. And so as you look, what this does now is it opens up an opportunity for organizations, not just to deploy easier, right? To deploy at a lower cost. It allows organizations now to take on the benefit of global management. It allows organizations to now manage all of their content from wherever they might be. So if they have a home office, if they've got a C-suite somewhere located in the building um, that may not reside where the AV, the AV infrastructure is going to be, we can begin to give, you know, multitudes, uh, multi, excuse me, a multiple uh, ways of being able to manage your data. And because we're utilizing your existing infrastructure, it allows us to be what they call hyperscalable. And this is an important term also when you hear a lot of folks talking about, oh, we're, we're extremely scalable solution. Okay, well, tell me more about that. And what they say is, well, we're going to build your solution based on your current needs, but don't worry, we can grow with you. That's what you, you'll hear most people talk about this. But then you ask the question, well, how? If I wanted to add another source on my network, if I wanted to add another display on my network, how do you expand or scale to my business needs? And the, the answer with hardware-based solutions is, well, buy this additional box and then run this additional cable and then make this programming change and then incorporate it into your solution. And we can do that. What we say is, uh, you want to add that display? We'll mount the display and throw it on your network. You want to add an operator source or you want to add a source? Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll connect that source through RTSP streams, through VNC screen scrape. You know, we'll utilize existing network protocols to be able to take that source in. So that, that's why we, we align ourselves more with what they consider hyperscalable, right? Because you can, on the fly, just begin to really scale without having to go and start pulling cables and adding hardware and, and the like. And this becomes a really sexy solution for the IT folks in the, in the world because as an IT manager and above, the folks who are responsible, and again, we go back to the IT and AV convergence, right? AV solutions almost exclusively now are being funded by the IT department. And beyond the funding mechanism, there's the management portion of that. And so you've got these IT departments who are now responsible for managing all this AV equipment, which with every other solution that isn't userful is overburdened with hardware that's proprietary. So now you've got proprietary boxes that all have IP addresses that are sitting on a network that the IT department has no visibility to. And I can't tell you how many times I've gotten the call, and again, I'm like putting my integrator hat on for a second, where an IT department says, we have a Windows 7 box that we didn't even know was on our network. <laughs> I've heard that one a few times. 
We can't have Windows 7 in our infrastructure. That is a security vulnerability nightmare. And we don't know why we didn't know about this. And well, you didn't know about it because it was tied to a proprietary, a proprietary AV box and you weren't managing it. And so by allowing our end users to use non-proprietary, commercially available off the shelf, you know, computing products and, and, and the like, we now give true visibility for the IT department to manage. So they're always aware of what's on their network. If they want to throw in, you know, patches, they can incorporate that into their their traditional uh, everyday security processes, and it just makes it a whole lot easier for them to manage. So we've got global management, we've got hyperscalability, um, and we've got you know extensive amounts of distribution because of the way that we deploy. Now, I hope at some point you're going to talk about cost because all of this great functionality sounds like it could be, you know too expensive but i'm guessing that since it's software we might be able to help people out with that too yeah i'm i'm uh and i gotta be honest so I, i've mentioned that i've worked for an integrator before for, for those of you who who may know me out there those of you who, who may not um, that integrator was avispl right the world's largest av integrator and so that's where i came from um and and being able to you know, sell solutions that were within customer budgets that met customer needs was the number one priority. It's also one of the reasons that drew me to Userful, one of many, is in working with Userful on that side of the line, you know, the light bulb goes off. I'm saying, well, okay. My first inclination was to say, well, if I can't sell boxes and I can't sell hardware, where's the margin for me as an integrator? You know, why would I want to sell this solution? And then you learn about the fact that this is a a software so solution that is cost effective for the end user because our software subscriptions are going to cost significantly less than any hardware solution out there so the customer wins it's a reoccurring subscription based model you know it's a SaaS model and so for an integrator you get to sell reoccurring revenue that allows you to grow with the customer and because you're doing right by your customer and the end users now you create that that partnership that says well I could really trust you because you have my best interest at hand. You're not just trying to sell me boxes that are going to overburden my network. You're going to sell me a solution that allows it to be as flexible as my workflow is. And so even if they start out small, even if they just start out with a, you know, a couple of rooms, what they quickly see is just how intuitive the software is, how, how cost effective it is to deploy, right? How easy it is to manage. And they go, well, I want this everywhere. Now, now the light bulbs are going off for all the integrators out there and for all the end users because it's a win-win for everybody. Your end users aren't paying more than they're supposed to. Your integrator partners are, are able to create a long-term relationship with these end users because of the fact that they're able to deploy so quickly and sell them those licenses. It makes it easier for them to manage because now a lot of that support can go to the IT department and now we're providing ancillary support, right? And we're saying, okay, we can help you. Userful has that 24/7 help desk support as well, so which is which is very um, attractive to people who have 24/7 operation centers. But the simple answer to your question is, the the cost is going to be significantly less than any other solution out there by the mere nature, excuse me, the the, the mere nature of of the way we deploy. Is we don't have to go in there and say, okay, how many sources do you have? Oh, you have 24 sources. Okay, that'll be 24 encoders which by the way, are gonna need 24 decoders. How many displays do you have? Okay, well, let's we'll start adding up all the boxes for those displays. Okay, now we have to put in in-room controllers because we have to get you touch panels and we have to get you this and we have to get you that. By the time you're done, your bomb is you know three pages long full of hardware that we don't need. You know, We go in and we say, okay, we're gonna give you a enterprise server. And by the way, we'll give you the specs if you wanna get it yourself. Right, but it's commercially off the off the shelf available, you know, servers, and then we're going to give you a uh, what they call a U client adapter, which again is usually in, use, using commercial off the shelf products. One of those goes behind every display. Um, for those of you who might be familiar with that model, the very first question you might ask is, well, well, how much is these adapters going to cost me? You know, because now I have to include that behind every display. That's where the cost is coming from. No, these adapters cost uh, currently. Uh, you can look on our website and you know it's 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 pennies on the dollar to what you guys would typically purchase for 
any other solution that requires what they call PC uh, or, or display nodes or, you know, display PCs or there's a wide variety of, of vernacular out there, um, all of which is proprietary yet again, right? So we're removing the proprietary, we're lowering the cost. I had this conversation just yesterday with some members of our executive team um, because I'm sitting here saying, you, you know, we are selling literally seven times lower at a cost seven times lower for these, you know, uh, Uclient adapters than what our competition needs. And the reason for that is, is we're not looking to, to sell the hardware. We're not a hardware company. So we want to bring down the cost as low as possible, make it as easy as we possibly can for end users to deploy by removing the burden with the cost to entry with hardware. And so it's, it's significantly cheaper is, is the simple answer to your question. Yeah, it's great. Um, I, I've opened up another slide here that I, I'd like to talk about also. So, you know, you mentioned the cost and we talked a little bit about hardware. Here is where we really get exciting, okay? Because our architecture supports a wide range of deployments. Um, and you'll see any server architecture, any display. So what that means for us is I'm gonna start from the right-hand side and work my way left, is in addition to being able to provide an on-premise server, the enterprise server that I, I spoke about previously, we could also deploy in the cloud. All right, we have cloud services so that if you wanted to utilize that function, it gives them the flexibility to now take on a whole new level of global management, a whole new level of hyperscalability, because now you're optimizing from the cloud. We also have the ability to deploy via data center, where if you don't want to have, you know, a single server racked in, a, in you know, in somewhere in a data center, not a data center, but in a traditional you know, MTU or something like that behind your, your room, you could actually build out a data center solution by which you're managing your own infrastructure from your own data center. Okay, so we, we, we also do hybrid models. So if you wanna do on-prem and the cloud, we can do that as well. So that makes it really exciting for people who, um, as you're going through that consultative discussion to, to talk about how do you wanna deploy, and that's really the ultimate benefit. And, and another reason why I love Userful and why I came over here is, as you talk to end users and as you talk to folks who need to deploy these solutions and you're working through that that highly consultative discussion you want to be able to have that flexibility you want to be able to say look we're not going to try to fit a square peg in a round hole here we're going to offer something that will literally be as flexible as your use case and your need so where are your sources let us know how many of them are there where are your displays what is your use case what is the information that you need to transmit over this this uh, platform that we're selling Right. And then where are the key stakeholders? You know, and then how do you want to deploy this? Do you want to deploy on prem? Do you want to utilize the cloud? And we can talk through the various advantages of each one of these until we come to a solution that really benefits the end user. Now that you have, you know, three different deployment methods is really attractive. But talk to me about maybe the migration between them. So, you know, I, I run into a lot of customers that maybe are looking for on prem now, but you know, two years down the road, they want to be in the cloud. Does user full migrate with them is it a system that can adapt to not only you know growth of the endpoints and the inputs but also uh you know growth of how how it's deployed in the architecture yeah that's a phenomenal question matt and i appreciate i appreciate you asking that and the simple the simple answer is of course we can um and again this goes back to the nature of the deployment right being a software defined solution and if you you heard me say uh, very quickly that we also offer hybrid models that is essentially the in-between, right? So if you start off on-prem and you say, this is great, but you know, I'm seeing some, uh, some use cases where we can really benefit from the cloud, we will absolutely work on migrating you to the cloud and we'll build you out a server in the cloud. And you know, because it's software, we're taking databases and we're migrating them to the cloud instead of taking that information and keeping it on-prem. If you decide, you know what, we really wanna go into a data center, we will work with you to ensure that we have the right solution, keeping in mind that, uh, going from on-prem to on the cloud, in the cloud, uh, is going to be a, a, a much easier transition. When you move from, let's say, on-prem to data center, there's an actual physical location change. There's potentially, you know, that takes on an entirely different model. And, I, and I'm sure the users out there and the listeners out there will, will appreciate this, right? Is that this is not just taking a database and moving it to a different location. This is taking on an entirely different infrastructure. That being said, we will absolutely support that decision and absolutely work with them to ensure that we migrate them to the proper solution, keeping in mind that it might be a little bit more than just a database switch. There might be right. some additional components involved. Thanks. Um, the uh, the left side now of the screen talks less about the infrastructure as it as it relates to you know your server and more about the endpoint, which is your display, right? 
Um, and, and this is really exciting, right? So LG is a company that we've partnered with. They've got WebOS, for those of you familiar with LG and WebOS and their smart displays. We have actually um, completed an integration to WebOS. So what does this mean? It means that we now have a uClient app, not a uClient adapter. So that really cheap box that I told you that we can get you, that's seven times lower than our competitors, um, we can now remove that too. So if you standardize on LG displays that have this WebOS with the integration that we've developed, we could actually now deploy our app right on their, their chip on their display and send content directly to it and do all the decoding local to the display. So that now just becomes even more of a, a flexible and scalable solution because now it's one less thing to, to install. So I hope I hope that makes sense. Yeah, that that I mean that significantly brings down the cost, and it's a cost that grows, right? As the as your system grows, that's something that continually grows. When you remove that cost, it's it's pretty incredible over the life of the system how much money that can save. Um, and so I'm glad I'm glad that you know, obviously you 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 get the value there. I'm certain that the uh, the folks out there listening get the value of that as well. And this is another migration story, right? Because if you have a, a, a customer or an end user that says, we really love the value of standardizing on an LG display with the WebOS built into it. LG is a phenomenal com company. They make phenomenal displays. They're constantly at the head of the curve with, with you know, new, um, new types of technology. And so we, yes, we'd love to standardize on LG. Problem is we've got all these leg legacy displays that we, we wanna incorporate into our solution right now and then as we, you know, get funding and as we begin to migrate towards LG, you know, what do you do? And that goes back to, well, that's perfect because we have the Uplan adapter. It's going to cost you pennies to the dollar. We're going to throw that on back of your legacy displays. And then as you begin to migrate towards, you know, the LG, we can remove that display altogether. And it's not like, and here's, here's the beautiful part, right? It's not like you're sitting here saying, well, I just spent upwards of $1,000 on that adapter. I don't want to have to spend a thousand dollars on a display and just junk it when I when I upgrade. You know, the, the cost is so significantly lower than than everything out there that it, it, it the migration just makes sense. You're right. Now talk to me about the the display adapter because that's one thing that I, I do get questions about. And you know, isn't this just another player or isn't this just another, you know, a small thin client PC behind uh behind a display? How is this any different? So it, it, good question, right? So this is this is not just a media player and think of this as an additional part to our platform. And this is why I think talking about the uClient app really helps bring to life the story of what Userful is doing, okay? Um, the thin client, if you wanna call it, or the uClient adapter or the small PC um, is not necessarily a media player. It's not necessarily just a computer. It's actually housing our uClient software as part of Userful. And what this uClient software is doing is it's creating the bridge that creates that visual networking platform. And that word platform is something that I really hope resonates with everybody listening out there. This is something that when you think about, um, again, the way the IT organizations out there are, are deploying, the way that, you know, what really resonates with the IT folks out there, they, it's something that, that Gartner has called the modernized services architecture, okay? And when you think about modernized services architecture, what they're really saying is we want something that is really easy to deploy and we want something that we can add and remove services or apps very quickly and efficiently without having to re-gut entire infrastructure. And so keeping that in mind, Userful says, well, we have this platform that will deploy on your existing infrastructure, okay? Creating a platform by which you can add apps, you can add services because Userful is now the platform by which you are allowing an end user to send content to various different displays. So this uClient adapter is a part of that story. It's a part of that platform. Whether it sits on the LG display directly or whether it sits on a uClient adapter or a thin client PC, right, behind a display is of no consequence. Now, what it's actually accomplishing though is it's not just a decoder, but that's one of the functions, right? It's decoding all the content streams. It's performing that function. It's creating the bridge to the userful platform or the userful software, which allows us to, you know, do things like if you wanted to do picture in picture, if you wanted to do drag and drop, if you wanted to have, you know, some functionality with with uh, how you're visualizing your content. This adapter does all of that. In addition, when you want to utilize it for um, uh, corporate signage, digital signage applications, 
we also have forward and store. So it has the ability to actually load content like a media player, right? And that's where some of the confusion comes in is because it does so many things that you can very easily just pick one and go, yeah, you know what, that's a media player. Well, yeah, it does that too. And that's pretty much my answer, right? Yeah, it does that too. But it's not just the media player. It is, it is the mechanism by which we are decoding sources, creating the endpoints which allow the platform story to exist because now you have a, you know, essentially, and we'll get to a slide that will show us better, but you've got your sources and you've got your endpoints, right? So it's about what is your source and the source is anything that you want to visualize. What type of content do you want to visualize? And then where do you want to visualize it? Well, that uClient adapter or the uClient app is the endpoint as part of our platform. So I awesome. hope that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Thank you. Okay. So this is the, the diagram that I, I was referencing here, right? So you've got um, showing you all three of our deployment models. You've got on-prem, you've got your, your user for cloud um, data center. Uh, you can notice that you have your administrators or your operators or your users can either be local to where the content is being shown or they can be remote. The reason for that is because we, again, are residing on the network. So whether you are remote going through the cloud or remote going through a VPN connection, which puts you on the LAN, you have the ability to manage where that content is being visualized. Now, here's, here's one thing that I, I, I'm, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, and I'm, I'm shocked that I haven't said it yet, is userful, while userful is a software-defined solution, it doesn't warrant a software installation on anybody's PC. We are completely web-based, okay? You have an HTML5 browser, you can access our software. Now this is game changing because in a world where we just were all forced into a lockdown situation for the better part of a year, a year and change at this point, and people were forced to work from remote home offices. Some of us were used to that already, but the majority of the folks out there were, were put in a very uncomfortably new position where they're having to manage infrastructure, manage content from a remote location and just didn't have the means to do that. And, you know, sure, Zoom and Microsoft Teams and all these different entities helped the day-to-day -day face to face dialogue, but it wasn't giving them access to their content. It wasn't saying, okay, well, I've got this entire pool of sources. And where this really resonated was your mission critical command and control centers, your operation centers that are running 24 seven, that are monitoring your network health and statistics, providing analytics, you know, providing security, you know, for in many cases, um, you know, critical infrastructure or providing security for network camp for, for enterprise campuses. And now you're taking all these people and saying, well, you can't show up to work. Or if you do, you can only have a handful of people. And now you had an operations center that housed 30 to 50 people that has, you know, five or six. And you're saying, how do, how do we facilitate this, this workflow? Well, because user, user full steps right into that story and says, hey, you know, we can help. Do you have HTML5 browser? Do you have a VPN? Okay, well, guess what? We can deploy in a such a way that now if you're remote or if you want to deploy on-prem, but you want to utilize your entire office space and have people in different offices to socially distance, well, throw your laptop on the network, open up a web browser, and guess what? You have access to our software. Okay, this is game changing in terms of how we distribute and how we manage and how we scale. Yeah, that's incredible. So this, I won't go into too much detail on this. This is more just showing, you know, our, our uh, remote access capabilities and how we do that. And then global management through the cloud. So this is just another um, diagram on, on how Userful does deploy in the cloud and what some of those benefits are. You know, and I, I don't think that it's difficult to understand the benefits of a cloud deployment. Um, you know, again, this, this is now for those enterprise clients who have, you know, should have you know campuses all over the, the country, all over the world, and they're saying, okay, well, I'd love to say that we have this beefed up network infrastructure that will support transmission of content overseas, but you know, really, if we had a cloud server being able to you know deploy some of this and help us to manage some of this, that would be really helpful. And so, so help me out. So we've gone through some really great. Uh, reasons why the the approach Userful is taking is is just beneficial all the way around for customers for integrators. 
and, and really that speaks to the deployment methods and being a software-based solution. But the catch is going to come with, you know, what what is the user experience, right? So take talk to me a little bit about the user experience. Is this going to give people the traditional tools that they expect from their from their video wall, you know, processors and their hardware-based platforms in their control rooms? Uh, you know, what what are we losing? Everything sounds great. Is, is what are we missing? So so another great question, Matt. And and here's and here's the kicker. And wait for it. You're not losing anything, okay? <laughs> uh, and and here's and here's and and, and I want to I want to be very forthright and very candid, okay? Um, I've deployed virtually every solution in command and control centers over the expanse of my career, okay? I, I know them all. Um, and if you start looking through features and benefits, you know, for the wide range of of organizations out there. They're all kind of trying to mimic each other, right? Everyone's just saying, "Well, we have drag and drop." Okay, sure. Yeah, we we give you drag and drop. Do you have snap to grid? Yeah, we've got snap to grid. Do you have soft KVM functionality? You know, we want to be able to within your software control remote computers that have you know keyboard mouse you know requirements. Yeah, sure, we can do that, right? So all of your core capabilities that you would need uh, within a command and control software are already natively built into our our solution. Um, the way it gets better, or the way there's more, is our our GUI is actually a little too easy to use, you know. And I say that because you often find end users that are like, "I'll just do this myself." Like, "All right, let, let's just help you out a little bit." <laughs> and they get really comfortable really quick um, with just being able to not just manage and not just navigate through, but program, configure, add. You know, the the management of our solution, you know, and and just the overall use of our solution has been made very, very, very intuitive. Um, but I will say this, I'm not going to sit here and beat my chest because I think anybody who does that would be, you know, putting themselves on a, on a bit of a, an island where I say, there's nothing that we don't have. Whatever you need, we have it, right? You're always going to have areas for improvement. You're always going to have areas where you're like, you know what? I wish it did this. Right. You know what? There could be some improvement in this area of your software. And this is literally literally the the one if i had to rate my reasons for making the move from avisbl to userful this literally is top of the list and i say that because i had an experience with userful back in 2018 before i was hired before i was working for this organization and uh they gave me a demo of their software and i said it's good but it could use a few things i said here are some of the things that i think that you would need to do to really be a player in this industry and I gave him, you know, tongue in cheek about six things, almost kind of just saying, yeah, you know, because I know, I know the industry and I've made requests of software and I've made requests of hardware and I've made requests of solutions that I'm still waiting for <laughs> you know, 10 years plus and it just, it hasn't happened. Um, I want to say if it was six months, it was a long time, you know, from the moment I had that conversation, it was literally a quarter and a half later. I got an email from the VP of sales, Kevin Dillon. Hey, Shannon, I want you to take a look at some of the changes that we made to our software. I think you'll see some of the things you may have mentioned before. And literally all six of the things that I had asked them to implement were done. And not like kind of done, done, working well. That can happen easily in a hardware-based environment, right? Say again? <laughs> That can totally happen easily in a hardware-based environment. Oh yeah, of course. They'll completely <laughs> just re revamp their entire hardware infrastructure and come up with a new product for you like that. No, no big deal. <laughs> no. So again, you know, thank you for making that point. Right? It's it's you know, being a software-defined solution gives you the benefit of being able to be nimble. Right. And 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 here's and here's one of the the key differentiators. And I'm not going to call any any competitor out by name. That's not my nature. I will simply say this: it exists in the world that we live in today, whereby you can get a solution today proprietary in nature hardware in nature and tomorrow be put on an end of end of life list because great news we just came out with this new product and by just came out we mean we've been working on it for two years we knew that this was going to be the release date but we're still going to sell you our old stuff until we release it right and so i i've i've been on the receiving end of that phone call okay and having to say sheepishly I had no idea either. You know, they just released this newer version of hardware, and yeah, your stuff is end of life. You got to replace that in three years because their support's going to end, and they're they're through the roof upset, right? 
And that's what I like to call roadmap transparency. Okay, Userful has some of the most transparent business model I've ever been accustomed to, not just internal to its employees, but external to its customers. So much so that we actually invite our customers into our roadmap discussions. We want to know from them because we know we're not all things to all people that we'd love to be, but we do understand that we can be. And we do understand that we're flexible enough because of our model that if there's a change that needs to be made, tell us about it. We want to know about it and we will incorporate it and then we'll communicate to you, hey, here's our roadmap for the next six months. Here's our roadmap for the next year. By the way, here's what we're working on years two to three, three to five. And we'll have those discussions to let you know that here are the things that are in the works. So while it may not have every tweak that you may, may want at the moment, just know that we're constantly working on it. And that's actually one of the primary reasons that I was brought on board was to help drive that discussion forward as you know, director of product marketing and, and management and say, here's what I know from my experience. Here's what I can see that we might need to add to our solution and watch our engineers do what they do best, right? Is turn this stuff around lightning fast and put it back into the hands of our end users. So, so I think in summary, and we'll just end with a summary, right? Is when people think of userful, I want you to think of a true partner and I want you to think of a, a solution that optimizes for the IT and that convergence of AV and IT. Our solution optimizes for the IT network to allow both the integrator and the end user to get the best in breed of a solution that will grow with them and allow them to scale at a level that is has never been seen before, right? And so I think that's that's really what I want to resonate with folks is that you know userful is a platform that optimizes for the network and it allows you know um, it, it allows for future growth and expansion at a, at a rapid rapid rate. Great. Thank you so much, Shane. So I know there is a ton of content available. People can see a, a lot of videos that we've posted, demonstrations of the software, but I wanna take this time if there are any questions in the audience to please make sure you put them in and Shane and I are here to answer them. All right, I hope you all learned something about Userful today. I am going to invite Shane, and we're also joined by Solmaz as well. Hello, Solmaz. Hi there. Uh, we are here to answer questions. So we have a couple questions so far. Um, the first one being, so what is the MSRP of the Uclient adapters? Can you guys shed any light on some cost ranges of those adapters? Are we talking hundreds? Are we talking thousands? I'm gonna let Solmaz do what she does best and answer this sales question. <laughs> sure, thank you. So <laughs> like something between, so the zero client and the U client adapters are something between $100 and 120 MSRP. Okay, great, thank you. I think that gives a, a much better idea. So we also had another question. Let's see, this is from Willis and he says the userful ecosystem shows executive visualization can you describe what that is or what those capabilities are sure i could take that one so executive visualization is essentially a form of data metrics if you think about an organization where you have executives whether it be c-level vp or otherwise who need to have critical information to help them make their business decisions it's being able to display that information quickly and efficiently wherever they might be located so that's just a short version Perfect, thank you. All right, I'll give it a moment for any other questions to come in. Well, it, I w actually, I'll take this time because I believe there is a new sales incentive for people to be aware of for Userful, uh, which is something everyone should be aware of on the call. There is a new spiff for qualified leads that lead to a sale. Uh, you should get all of that information in an email blast, but definitely something to pay attention to. Uh, and is there any other questions? Well, I don't see any coming. Oh, never mind. Les came in right at the last second. So, how much network throughput per device is being requested? So oh, that 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 question is a slippery slope. Um, so we, <laughs> I was thinking it would be. Yeah, I, I mean, I've 
I used to ask this question a lot until I sat down with people smarter than me who, who made me aware that the answer to that question is going to be different every single time. And the reason for that is, and I don't want to, I'm not trying to evade the question, but just to shed some light on it, right? When you talk about network throughput, the things that change the requirements for network throughput are things like, you know, what type of source is it, first and foremost? Are we talking Excel spreadsheets? Are we talking, you know, video? And then is that video uh, low resolution, high resolution? And then what type of protocols are we going to use to capture that video? Are we using RTSP? Are we using a hardware encoder because we want to encode this signal for higher frame rate? You know, all of these types of questions produce a different answer. And so that is actually one of the things that we would highly recommend on the front end of any sale. And this is something Solmaz is explicitly familiar with, right? Is that you have these consultative discussions on the front end to determine exactly that. What is the content that needs to be seen and shown? Where are these sources located so that we can begin to understand the level of network throughput that we're going to have to work with so we can design the solution around the workflow? If you heard uh, through, the web, through the, web, the webinar, excuse me, one of the benefits of the userful solution is that we are as flexible as the end user's workflow so we can have these discussions and pivot as needed. Yeah, it's a really great point. And the other, the other kind of point to that is that there are several ways to bring in a source, right? So we can, userful is adaptable. So we can adapt around what your needs. If you are saying that you have these certain uh, inputs and you need to have a, a predictable uh, bandwidth rate, there are ways that we can accomplish that. And there are certainly different ways that we can bring something into the system. I guess the, the point is, is that we really need to hone in on what the requirements are, and then we can suggest a, a best forward path. Um, all right. One really good one uh, from Dale is, can you quickly review again uh, what the licensing structure is to the software? Is it a one-time purchase or is it a subscription? I'll take that. Yeah, sure. Thank you. So um, it's a subscription model. So um, depending on uh, what the requirements are, it can be like a three-year package to begin with or five-year package. And there's an op there, there are options for like uh, renewing after that pr like primary, you know, multi-year uh, subscription. Great, thank you. All right, any, any last questions? None that I am seeing. All right, one last second. Let's see if I got one last message. Nope, no more questions. Perfect. Solmas, Shane, thank you both very much for joining us today. Uh, I hope everyone got something out of today's webinar because I love Userful. I think it's such a great approach to uh, to doing video walls and control rooms that if you didn't get enough information, please reach out. We're happy to go over and do a one-on-one -on -one session with you. Uh, if you have any technical questions, shoot them over. We're really excited to get uh, to get you in front of the userful platform as soon as possible. So with that, make sure you don't forget that we have spiffs on userful opportunities. So if you do have opportunities, bring them to us as soon as you can. Uh, we'll make sure that we make it worth your while. Everyone, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye.